All right, good. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on tonight. Let's get right to it. Let me go right and make sure we get all plugged in and get the cameras all set up and we'll go right to our lesson on tonight. Thank you for being with us on tonight. Thank you for sharing with us in God's word. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you for sharing with us. Let me shut that down there so we can be able to hear properly and allow you to come on in. Let me go ahead and get plugged in. To God be the glory. Thank you for seeing everybody here tonight. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing with us on tonight and in God's word. So we'll give you an opportunity to come on in this house to share with us on tonight. Thank you so much. Make sure you share a like and the actual uh, taping, amen, on tonight. So thank you for being with us. Let me adjust my camera just a little bit and make sure we get it just right here. Make sure I get it right. Uh, all right, I think that's a little better. Amen. Be patient with us as we try to get everything all situated here on today. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. Amen. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. We've gotten everything in order here. Let me go ahead and get my computer set here and we'll move forward. It's good to see everybody. Been a long day, long week thus far, but we thank God for just being here today. Thank you for you joining us. Amen. Please share and like the video and we'll go right to God's word and share on tonight what God is yet doing. Amen. And his word for us in spite of us. Isn't it good when God, isn't God a good God that he always looks out for us and takes care of us and in spite of us? He loves us. He loves us with an undying love. And we know he loves us because he showed it through his son, Jesus Christ. And the word tells us that he went, while we were yet sinners, that Jesus yet died on the cross for us. And that the word says that God gave his only begotten son. He gave his best just for us. That's good news to know. In this world, it seems like it's so crazy. It seems like people are being so so mean and so uh, hateful and so mistreating of one another, not loving one another like Christ said we should. But we have to, as Christians, have to always show love. We have to always show love because we show love because our Father showed love to us. He first loved us before we even knew who he was. He loved us. He loved us and gave his very best. And, amen. And he always wants the best for us. That's how we know he continues to love us because he doesn't want anything bad for us. He wants all the good for us. Uh, he wants all the blessings for us and the best for us. He just wants us to accept the best. But first he wants us to accept him for his Lord and Savior. Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. What things, Pastor? I mean, the good things, amen, the blessings, and the, the health. and, and it's, uh, First of all, salvation, eternal life. Amen is, is, is the first thing he, he wants us to have is have eternal life. And, and uh, it allows us not just to have religion, we always say, but to have relationship. We show believers all the time. It's not about having religion, whether you're Baptist or Pentecostal or, or, or whatever you might be, uh, Luther, Lutheran or uh, 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 Baptocostal, or whatever it might be, a Methodist, a United Methodist, African Methodist, but it's about having a relationship. Do you not know when we get to heaven, it won't be no separation of churches. It'll just be the body of Christ worshiping God every day. Hallelujah. The body of Christ going before God, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. So thank you for being with us tonight. Amen. We will share a word with you here and walk through a word. A couple verses I want to share with you tonight. As we walk through, we've been walking through the book of 1 Corinthians and we'll keep going through that book. Amen. In chapter 13 and I want to go through a little different part of chapter 13, another verse. Amen. Where we want to take our time to walk through this word because in this word is strength and his word is life. The word tells us to hide this word in our heart that we might not sin against God. We hide it on the inside. So we change on the inside out, not the outside in because we change on the inside. The inside changes our outside. Oh my God. That no matter what our circumstances is, we count it all joy. We find joy in it. Why? Because it's not about happiness. It's about joy. Can you say joy? It's about joy in every situation, joy in your circumstances, joy in your trouble, joy in your tribulation, joy in your joy in your in, in your storms of life. It's about having peace while you're in the midst of the storm. It's not that the storm is happening; it's what happens to you. And I remember growing up, they used to tell us all the time that life is is um, uh, ten percent of what happens to you, 
and 90% of how you deal with it, how you respond to it. We all gonna have challenges and triumphs. We all do from pastor all the way down. All, we all have challenges in this life. We have tribulations, but I thank God that he said he would be with us yet in our tribulations. So let's walk through this word on tonight as we go right to it. But first, we always start with a word of prayer. Always be about praying, going before God. And, and so uh, please like, share, and pass on the Bible study for tonight as we began to, with a word of prayer. We know there are many issues happening in our community, issues of people being hungry and homeless. And our children who are out right now, probably in spring break, amen. Please don't let your children get lazy in spring break. Keep them busy, amen. And most importantly, we tell all our children to always read the book of Proverbs every day. A Proverbs a day keeps sin away. Amen. It gives us wisdom. Now, you're going to make choices. You're going to make, you're going to fall short every day. But if we're focusing on God's word, it helps us to keep our mind stayed on him. And you know what that does. When we keep our mind stayed on him, he keeps us, what, in perfect peace. Wow. Peace while you're in the midst. Yes, peace while you're in the midst of the storm. Now, why you're going through, you don't look like what you're going through. You don't smell like smoke. Oh, my God. You don't smell like what you've been through. Oh, my God. That you can yet still look and have life and have it more abundantly. So thank you for joining us. And I ask you to join us here in a minute in prayer. As we go right to God's word on, on today. But I mean, we want to lift our special prayer. Our special people who are recovering from um, being under the weather. We want to pray for them on tonight. And then pray for those who are celebrating the life of a loved one this transition we want to keep them encouraged and keep them let them know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal nor cure so if we go right to the word let's go right to praying amen before we go to the word let's go right to praying for our brothers and our sisters amen let's bow our heads god of grace god of mercy god of love we love you we thank you oh god no before we ask you for anything we thank you for everything Thank you for airing our lungs today, God, a sound mind. Thank you for waking us up to see another day. God, it may have been a difficult, challenging day today, God, but you were yet with us. You gave us victories, oh God. We can even think back, oh God, the victories you gave us today. Some people we want to be upset with, God, we couldn't be upset with. Some things that should have happened to us, oh God, you protected us and shielded us from. God, thank you. And some blessings, oh God, you bestowed upon us, oh God, that we weren't even expecting. Un unexpected blessings from unsuspecting places. You provided blessings for our life. You provided healing for some of us, oh God. You healed us from some diseases, oh God, that wanted to attack our bodies and our mind and us. But God, thank you today. Thank you for healing us. God, you kept us, oh God, from, you kept us and allowed us to hold our tongue today. So we wouldn't say certain things that would not be pleasing to you. You kept us from doing some things today, God, that were would not have been pleasing to you. God, thank you. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins, oh God. Thank you for giving us our challenges, oh Lord. And thank you for most importantly, God loving us with an uncompromising love, an unconditional love that you you loved us, God. God, you loved us when we were sinners and dirty and filthy in our filthy rags. Thank you. We love you today, Lord, and we pray, oh God, for our young people who are out of school, oh God, some are in spring break. We pray for um, those who are traveling, oh God, those who are moving about, oh God, during this season. We ask that you be with them, be, be around cars and vehicles and planes and buses, however people are traveling, oh God, in this season. We pray you be their protection. You be their hiding place. Protect our home and families until they see them again. Then, God, we pray for our children, oh God, who are out, oh God, who are on break, oh God, and help them to make right choices. Help them to be with, around the right people. Help them to listen to godly counsel, to listen to mother and dad, grandmother, grandfather, uncles and aunties, who try to steer them in the right way. Then God help adults, oh God, have a spirit of love, oh God, and steer them in the right way. Then God, we ask you to forgive us of our sin today, God, for there are many. As we touch and agree, oh God, and asking you, God, to hear our prayer and not turn us away. God, we thank you for life today. We thank you that we're on the wake-up list today, God. Hallelujah. We thank you that you woke us up to see another day that was not promised. And God, we don't take it lightly because it could have been another way. When we think about how the morgues, oh God, and the hospitals are full of people, God, you blessed us. You provided a way for us, Lord. So for that, we say thank you. 
Then got their names on our prayer list on tonight. God, we want to lift up, oh God, Sister Marie Brown, continue healing her body. Sister Rosalind Cash, oh God, continue to restore and heal her body. Lord, we pray, oh God, for Sister Teresa Bright, Lord, that you will yet continue to be with her. God, we saw this weekend, oh God, and God, you are yet restoring her day by day, being a strength and help for her husband, oh God, Brother Louis, God. Continue to strengthen him, oh God, yet in this season. Then we pray, oh God, for Sister Patterson, you will continue to restore her and strengthen her as you are moving her, oh God, to total restoration. We pray for Sister Gidget, oh God, and her family, her brother and her daughter, God, and what they're yet going through. God, we know you can do anything but fail. And God, we know this present suffering shall not compare to the glory that shall be revealed. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer, God, and for bending your ear to the earth, God, just to hear us. Lord, we pray continue healing, God, for Mr. Mother, Mother, Sister uh, Clara Smith, oh God, the oldest member of our church, oh God, has been lived a full life. God, she's an example, not just for the women, God, but for the men of how to love Christ and God, how she still comes to church, oh God, and dresses up every day, oh Lord, and comes even in high heels, God, hallelujah. And she's over 95 years old, 95. Thank you for Mother Smith. Then God, we pray for the others on our prayer list. Sister Stewart's daughter, God, continue healing her body. Strengthen her, oh God, and give strength to caregivers. Sometimes God, caregivers get worn down taking care of other people. God, be with caregivers today. Then, God, we pray for the neighbor's family, the Griffin family, the Deed family, and the Hodge family, God, in this season. We pray for little Nico and Nolan, oh God, you continue to heal their bodies. Lord, we pray, oh God, for Brother Jerome Deeds, you continue to restore him and strengthen him. And Deacon Griffin and Deaconess Griffin, God, you will yet still heal their bodies, oh God, that no evil shall befall them, oh God. We pray that no weapon formed against them will prosper. God, then to Mother Neighbors, God, you continue to strengthen her, God, where she is. Heal her body, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray your healing. Your word says the prayer of faith shall heal the sick, God, and you shall raise them up. Then, God, we pray for Brother Barry, God, who's yet recovering day by day. Be encouraged, Brother Barry, in God, oh God, knowing, God, you are doing a great work in him. You're restoring him day by day. We speak life and life more abundantly. Then for Brother Vaughn Reed, oh God, young man, oh God, in church, God, we pray you'll continue to heal of his body. What the enemy went for bad, God, turned around for his good. Allow him to know that, God, you have not forgotten him. No matter what he goes through, he's determined, oh God, to be there and to serve you. So thank you. We pray for the Jarrell Roberts family, oh God, in this season. That you will meet every need for them spiritually, financially, emotionally. God, we pray for the healing, oh God, of Sister, Sister Roberts' daughter, oh God. That you will yet strengthen her, oh God, and sustain her, God, in these years. God, have us to know you are yet with them. God, you've opened up doors, oh God, and blessed us, oh God, when you could have turned our water off, when you could have stopped it, God, but God, you continue to bless us with life, and for that we're mighty thankful. Then, God, we pray for those families who are dealing with the loved one that's transitioned from life to eternity. Thank you for taking the Harvey Doty family, oh God, to Louisiana and bringing them back again, oh God, to be able to worship you, oh God, and honor you with their life. Thank you for sustaining them, oh God. Thank you for being with us yet in this season. Allow them to know, God, that they are not alone, that you are yet with them. That though we may celebrate the life of loved one that's transitioned, God, that we know that one day if we live right, oh God, we get a chance to see them again. Help us to be ready. Help us to get our house in order. Help us to be willing to serve you in spirit and in truth, oh God, so that one day when we stick our swords in the sands of time and study war no more, that you'll say, oh God, well, God, we want to hear you say, well done, hallelujah. We want to hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's all we want to hear you say, God. Thank you for what you will do. God, may I be in this Bible study tonight. Allow us to share a word, oh God, with your people. That they may be encouraged to push on. Keep pressing toward the mark of the high calling. This is me, the blessing we ask in the night. mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, we're going right to the word tonight. Amen. Let me get over here. Get uh, you know, all right, we're going right to the word tonight, going right back to the book of, of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. Amen. We're going to start reading at verse number four, and we'll go down and as far as we can get to on tonight, and then yet keep pushing forward in the word. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number four. Love is the greatest, the New Living Translation says. And then uh, we know in the prior chapter, chapter 12, Paul talked about this more excellent way. He was talking about love. So... That's what we're going to keep dealing with, this issue of love. Verse number four of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 13, verse four says, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Here where we start tonight. 
It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wrongful, wronged. Verse 6, it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Whenever the truth wins out. Amen. Here it is. Paul had just finished talking about uh, uh, how we, no matter what, what if we have speak with, 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 with languages, uh, languages of angels and men and a angels, a a amen, and, and have no, no love one another, he says we have nothing. He said, we're just, sing, we're just tingling brass. We're just tingling cymbals is what Paul says we are. If we have that and we're not, we're not loving our brother and our sister the way we should. It does not matter what, how we can even speak with special tongues. Amen. Then he goes on to talk about prophecy. That we have all the gifts of prophecy. That we can understand God and God's word and have all knowledge of God and don't love others. Mm. He said it would be nothing. He said, I would be nothing. He said, we give up, give everything we have to the poor and even, even sacrificed our bodies that we burned at the stake and, and, and could boast about it and didn't have love. He said, it would gain, I, he said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't gain nothing. And then he says, Paul, love is patient. Then Paul shifts his focus and talk about what love is. He says in verse four, love is patient and kind. You know, in my day and age, I, I've had to learn to be patient and kind. Amen. We think we all have to have probably a little bit to do with that, don't we? We all have to make sure we're taking our time and being patient and kind with one another, with family members and loved ones. And I thank God we have been able to learn it. I remember growing up as a boy, amen, my parents used to get on me all the time. When I was growing up, I had a real bad attitude. I had a real bad temper. I used to get really upset. Uh, and uh, and uh, my parents used to always have to get me to calm down. And I thank God that my parents worked on that to get me to calm down. And, to, and he said, boy, you're going to stroke out. <laughs> And I thank God that they were always working on me, loving on me to try to get me to. Well, can you imagine that being, being having, a, having a temper and a bad understanding at an early age? And then what it would be over the years now, how it would have gotten progressively worse. Because you know what with sin does? Sin, sin begins out very small. And then it kind of takes off. It takes root. Amen. It festers like a sore and it gets worse. And that's what sin likes to do. It likes to take root and take hold of our lives. Don't let sin do that. So we have to make sure that we're talking about letting love be, that we're being patient, that we're being kind, not jealous and boastful. Then Paul shifts over to verse 5. He says, love is not rude. Amen. How you, how you treat people. It says, love does not be rude to people. Love treats people right. It doesn't be rude to people. It treats people in a special way. Amen. That's why this thing called love is an action word. It's something you must tell yourself to do and continually work on. Well, Pastor, I, I, you don't know how old it doesn't matter. Have, listen, they always told me, old, old Deacon told me once, you never get nothing done until you get started. But if you get started on it, amen, you got time to complete it until Jesus comes. And God knows, people say, Pastor, God knows my heart. Yes, he does know your heart. He knows your heart is full of sin. <laughs> <coughs> He know your heart is full of sin. And guess what? He's willing to forgive you. The word says he's faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. He know we're imperfect, but he wants us to confess our sins before him. Amen. And he is faithful and just to forgive us. Then, then Paul shifts after he says what love is. He, then he says what love is not. He said love does not demand. Verse 5, he says love is not rude. And then he says it does not demand its own way. Wow. Uh, the, the finding thing about what do you mean by the man is on way we're going to push on. It says uh, the self-seeking attribute of character characterizes one who looks for their own comfort and joy. Mm. That's what seeking your own way is. You look for your own comfort and your own joy. It's not about you. It's about other people. It, when, when you don't, when you look for uh, comfort and joy in other people, you're not thinking about yourself. You're not being selfish. I think this this is point of being selfish. Don't be selfish. You, can, you can't be in love and be selfish. That's called self-love. Wow. But, but, but we're supposed to not just love ourselves, but we, could, we, love, we do know love starts first with us. We have to love who we are, who we are in, in, in Christ. Amen. Then love our father. Amen. Amen. Then love our brother, our neighbor, and our sisters, our brother and our sisters. Amen. So, you know, some people don't love themselves. Some people don't love themselves. They don't forgive themselves for things they've done in the past for past sins and past wrongs or what they've been through or how they've been hurt or how they've been abused. Listen, I'm going to tell you, have self-love. I know people sometimes have self-love even about the same racial uh, racial groups. Amen. We have to make sure we have self-love. We got to make sure we love one another. Amen. And love one another. Amen. 
But what helps us all get all that together, that love piece, is what we always say is loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart and then loving thy neighbor as thyself. Notice it makes the cross a symbol. I want to encourage you to love your Lord your God with all your heart because that by that way, by knowing that loving the way God loves, you learn how to love. See, we love because God first loved us. We love because God loved us with unconditional love. So I want to encourage you to keep doing that. But, but this other love that, that Paul talks about here is it, it's a self-seeking love and it seeks its own comfort and joy. Don't seek your own comfort and joy in love. Seek the comfort and joy of others, thinking about others, making others happy. A key facet of love is that it does not insist it's on its own way. It don't think about itself. And that's what Paul was say. This means that, 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 that at times we must, we must be willing to, to compromise for the sake of greater good, and the greater good is love, and differences, and when differences arise. Even when those differences arise, we ought to be thinking about the greater good, which is what? Peace and harmony with our brothers and our sisters. Living peaceably with other men, all men. Amen? Uh, and Paul it goes on to say in Ephesians 5, 1, 22, it said, we walk in love by imitating God's, uh, uh, God, God's just like Jesus did, offering our lives in sacrifice to God. Therefore, we're imitators. That's what that means. We imitate God. We imitate our father. You remember when you were growing up, you want to be like mom and dad? Well, guess what we ought to do when we, as you get older? We ought to, once we come to the knowledge of Christ, we ought to be trying to what? Be like our father. Imitate your daddy. There was a game we used to play growing up called Get Like Me. You remember that? You remember the game Get Like Me? I mean, we ought to be get like our father. Loving, amen. Loving our enemies. Praying for the word says praying for those who persecute you. Praying for those who would harm you and set traps for you. That's what the word says do. And Paul go, goes on to say that this walk in Ephesians 5 and 2 talks about refer, return, refers to behavior and how we act. See, love is an action word. And how we act and treat other people is an action word. How is your action word of love? Are you loving others or are you not loving? Are you thinking of your own comfort and joy? That's what Paul said. We shouldn't be about doing that. He said we walk in love when we act like God. When we behave like Jesus we are walking, wow, in love. Jesus loved us so much when he died on the cross, didn't he? Um, he gave us unconditional love. We know he died on the cross just for us. He loved us so much that he gave his holy life just for us. He died on the old rugged cross when we didn't know who he was. The apostle Paul stressed that, 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 that since God loves us sacrificially and unconditionally, we ought to love others in the same way. Watch this. We ought to love what? sacrificially and unconditionally. That means it's a sacrifice. I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice my position to love you. Oh my God. And I'm willing to love you unconditionally that no matter what happens, no matter this disagreement we have, no matter the disagreement you have with your brother or your sister, you are to love sacrificially and unconditionally. That's what love, not love doesn't seek its own way means. You don't seek your own comfort and joy, but you love sacrificially and unconditionally. That means no matter what's happened, you still love. Can you do that today? Amen. I'm like talking about this thing of love. There's so much we could learn about love and, 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 and give it unto others. The Apostle Paul gives us a detailed description of how to walk in love. He says, and we talked about here in verse number five, how love is patient, love is kind, love is, not, love is not jealous, love is not boastful, love is not proud nor rude, and doesn't seek its own way. And we know 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 7, 4 through 7, then talks about love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, endures through every circumstance. Amen. And we know what 1 Corinthians 13 and 13 says, the greatest virtue we, we can nurture in our Christian walk is this thing called agape love, which is unconditional love. That means we love in spite of, we love even if, we love even if, if, if they don't. Amen. We love unconditionally. Paul said that Jesus gave himself for us. Amen. Giving ourselves means offering our lives to God. What? As a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. Amen. Which is our reasonable service. Leviticus talks about this love too. In first, for Leviticus 1 and 17 and 3 and 16. It says, when we behave like this, our lives become a fragrant offering that is pleasing to God. And everyone uh, who encounters us. Amen. They see this, this scent, this, this, this smell of sweet love and aroma that we give. Paul urged believers to offer themselves a living sacrifice. What Romans 12 and 12 and 12 and 12 and 1 says, 
a holy living sacrifice. I mean, you walk around living. You're not dead sacrifice. You live, you're walking around breathing, what? Showing love and sacrificing. You're dying to self, amen, so that God may be increased and lifted up. You are living sacrifice, holy and pleasing. Watch this. That's what it means, acceptable to God. It means pleasing to God. You must be pleasing to God as this living fact. Not walking around with frowning. You know, sometimes we get tired. I mean, we have long days and long weeks. But we have to make sure that we're pleasing unto God. This is true and proper worship. That when we live our lives, there's a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. So I ask you today, are you living your life holy and pleasing to God? Ouch. Good question. Self-check. Romans 12 and 1. You ought to write that on your wall. Write that on one of your books. Write that, you gotta tweet that out, you gotta text that out. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Amen. Which means pleasing unto God. Paul, Paul continues in, in his walk about talking about what our love doesn't seek its own way. It's saying that love is, is not about uh, uh, that it's not about the way that's covenant convenient for yourself. That's what not seeking your own way is. It's not convenient. If it's convenient for you, it's too easy, then guess what? It ain't love. It ought to be sacrificial. Remember? And unconditional. Sacrificial. Come on, tweet that out there. Text that in the lesson tonight. Sac love is sacrificial and unconditional. It won't, it won't insist on its own way of being, being a convenient way for myself. That's what love says. Love says it's not about the way that gives me comfort. I won't seek my way. The ultimate surrendering of one's own way is love. The ultimate expression of, uh, of not insisting on your own way, it's the life of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ didn't have a home to live in. Jesus says, foxes have holes and birds have nests. He said, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. And we always want to complain and talk about, oh, I ain't got this, I don't have that, I don't have a nice house, I ain't got nothing. Guess what? Jesus didn't have anything. He had the clothes on his back. And the shoes on his feet. He said, foxes have holes and birds have nests. But the son of man, number two in the triune, he sacrificed everything. He came all the way down from heaven to be with us, to live like common men. But better yet, he lived lower than that because he didn't have anything. Here we are, we have places to go. We have houses to live in and clean clothes to put on every day. But yet, Jesus didn't have anything. Love is sacrificial. Love is, love is unconditional. Jesus loved us even though he knew we were going to, what? Deny him. He told, when Peter told, when he told Peter, he said, Peter, before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. Guess what? Jesus already knew, watch this, Peter was going to deny him. But you know what he still did? He loved him. You know some people in your life are going to treat you bad. But you have to know what you have to do. You have to have that unconditional love. Now, we're not saying let them walk all over you. I'm not saying that. But Jesus still loved Peter. He told Peter, this is what you're going to do. Gave Peter a choice, an opportunity to try to think about it. And to love, it, it's an action word. We have to think, we have to make ourselves consciously think about it, don't we? Focusing on trying to love. Even the people who are less loved, even people who treat us bad, and talk bad about us, and, and, and call us names, and throw our name out, slander in the street. Jesus knew Peter was going to deny him. But yet he said, I'm willing to die for Peter. And the other 11 disciples. Guess what? Because when they came for Jesus, guess what the disciples were? They were nowhere to be found. Jesus knew they were going to turn their back on him. And he says, I love you. In fact, about it on the old rugged cross, as he lay there, stretched out on the cross, not making a sound except for talking to his father, he prays to his father. See, that's, that's unconditional love there. That even while you're being persecuted, well, I'm, not, I'm not Jesus, Pastor. Okay, okay, I didn't say you have to be. But aren't we supposed to? The word says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And not just the mind of not thinking of robbery to be equal to God, but everything about Christ, how we love, how we give, how we forgive. Amen. Let this mind be in you. You got you to gotta, gotta text that out. Let this mind, every day you ought to say to yourself, put it on your computer, put it on the front of the screen of your computer, let it stroll across the audience, let this mind be in you. Oh my, what a word. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ came to be our example. 
We're not perfect like Christ. No, we're not. But she ought to be trying to be. The word says, we are as not, we are as, not as we shall appear. But when we see him, the word says we're going to be just like him. Who's him? Jesus. We're going to be just like him. So we ought to start working on this thing about trying to be like Christ. Amen? We ought to be loving him and giving. 1 Corinthians 10 and 24 says, don't be concerned with your own good, but for the good of others. Philippians 2 and 3 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count your others more significant than yourself. That's what true love does. Uh, true love says, I, I count, I think of my brother first. I, I think of my brother's upbringing. I think of my brother's happiness, my co brother's comfort rather than mine. Amen? I don't think about myself. I think about my brother. Philippians 2 and, 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 and 3 says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others better than yourselves. Amen? Thinking of others better than ourselves. And I like how Paul then again goes to the second part at verse number, in verse number 5. He, he then says, the continue part of it, the C part of it, he says, love is, it says, is not irritable. Irritable people are ones that allow themselves to be upset by the actions of others. We talked about that on last week, right? Irritable people, people allow outside circumstances, outside forces come in and cause them to act a certain way. Why would you give that kind of control to somebody else, knowing how they are? Why would you allow them to make you upset and make you irritable? Amen. It's something we all have to work on. Perfect example. I all have to work on it on our jobs and where we go and we can go even going to church sometime and some people may come at us different ways. Some people may talk to us, say something. But do we allow those people to Paul says love is not irritable. That means we don't allow the actions of others, amen, to get us upset and have us to act a certain way. Because if we get upset, then you may start thinking maybe you should respond on it. But the word says we, we should be angry and sin not, and it right. This means it's not about trying to eliminate all the irritating people in our lives, but rather loving in a way that we don't blow up and push people away because they can be annoying sometimes. That's what that says. We don't push people away because they can be because they, they, it may make us blow up and they can be annoying even unto us. Again, Jesus Christ, the perfect example of how we look at that. How he didn't push anybody away. Again, he didn't push Peter and Paul away. Thomas, none. He didn't push them away. Can you imagine that? They had been walking with Jesus all this time. They had watched Jesus heal the sick. They had watched Jesus feed the 5,000, 7,000. They had watched Jesus heal the withered hand. They had watched Jesus heal the sick. They had watched Jesus. They walked with Jesus. If anybody had a reason to be irritable, it was Jesus. <laughs> he should like he is with us. He should have been irritable, but you know what? He wasn't, because he loved them. He allowed the love of God to be on the inside. He said, "You know what? It's not about me. It's all about God. It's not about me. It's all about God. I have to love like my Father loved." And God did the same thing. You remember how many times God had kept calling, coming, calling you and telling you to come on, come on, you to do right. And guess what he did? He was always there. Wow. He was always there. Proverbs 29, 11 says, a fool gives full vent to anger, but the wise, uh, but, but, but the wise quietly, quietly holds it back. We ought to be about holding it back, not being irritable. Not being irritated, amen, by what happens yet around us, amen? Not letting circumstances cause us to act a certain way or act out of character. That's what love is not irritable. Me. Then, then Paul goes on to say, I found the, it says, and it keeps no record of being wrong. Mm. The idea of keeping no, uh, keeping no list of wrongs directly connects with Paul's words in Corinthians, uh, uh, believers early in the, in the epistle. Some of the, some of the church were bringing lawsuits we talked about last week and, and, and against each other. They were, they, they, they were, instead of settling, uh, church matters among themselves, uh, in a spirit of humility and love, they were dragging each other to court. Wow. Suing each other. I'm going to sue you. 
<laughs> You've probably seen people say that. I'm going to take you to court. I'm going to sue you. These are the Christians. They're not talking about hell. These are the people, the church people. Keeping records of wrongs being done. Paul talked to the firm stand on this matter. The very fact that you have lawsuits means that you have been completely defeated already. Oh my God, that's what Paul says. You're already defeated. The fact you even have to be thinking about suing somebody. He says you're already defeated. To combat this attitude one, uh, 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 about trying to get a pound of flesh out of someone. I'm going to get you back to this. I'm gonna, you know, you've seen people talk about, I'm going to get a pound of flesh out of you. I want to make you pay. Jesus provided again the ultimate example of love. On the cross, he paid the price, not for his sins. You, you know, you know whose sin Jesus was dying for on the cross, right? I don't hear you. Can I hear you? Mine. Take your finger. Don't point the cross, but point at yourself. It was your sin he was dying for on the cross wasn't his because the word says he walked on this earth all those years and never sinned he was full God and full man at the same time what an example of, of, of love Colossians 3 13 and 14 says also uh, it, it ties this this forgiveness to love forgive whatever grievances you have amen with one another that's what helps us not keep a record of the wrong. We forgive as the Lord forgave you. We, 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 and over and over, these virtues are, are put to put a love test. Amen? So often people say they love each other, but as soon as one gets angry, out comes the list. <laughs> I want to encourage you to get rid of the list. Don't bring up the list. I know they wronged you. I know they this. I know they treated you a certain way. I know they didn't invite you. I know they said this about you. I know they said that about you. I know they talked bad about you behind your back. Throw the list away. Accusation began to fly. Painful memories. Because that's what happens when you start bringing up the list. You know what happens? Pain happens. It hurts when think about what people did to you, doesn't it? It really hurts. But that's what you do. You know what? It's called self-inflicted love because you're causing yourself to be inflicted with pain. You're bringing that pain on yourself. Why do that? When all you got to do is forgive them and move on. Why hold on to that, amen, of wrongs? We should allow people, uh, and, 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 Paul, and, and, and the disciples even ask us, Jesus, how many times are we supposed to forgive our brother for wronging us? Let me tell me this, this point. When you don't forgive people, you know what happens? You allow people to hold you hostage. Wait a minute, Pastor. What are you talking about? Yeah. Because guess what? They forgot about it. You, you know who's walking around with rocks in their jaws? <laughs> talking, looking and stressing and, and, and got wrinkles in their forehead and, and mm, ducking and dodging. The other people probably forgot all about it. But you, what you force people to do, you give people that, oh my God, you give people power over how you act. You give people, when you don't forgive, those people hold you hostage. Well, better you hold yourself hostage. Wow. You actually handcuff yourself because you don't forgive. Forgiveness allows us to move on. Don't, don't, don't give anybody that kind of power over your life to where you don't forgive them, to where you're keeping records of wrong. And let's other thing. So you don't forgive them, you hold yourself hostage. But then also you got this list you're keeping up with. And you're holding yourself hostage. Why? Because you got this long sheet of paper. Amen. You're writing down every wrong they do. And guess what? They moved on. Nobody think about that. Except for you. Let it go. Let go and let God. People hold you hostage. And you hold yourself hostage. Because you don't forgive. And because you're keeping records of wrong. That's why Jesus says, forgive them. The goal is to have a spirit of reconciliation, to forgive those who, who seek forgiveness, who, who seek forgiveness, letting the past stay in the past. Wow. Listen, let the past go. I know, let the past go. Jesus know, let the past go. Some people have an ax to grind at, but, but Christians love seeks to bury the hatchet. That's what Christian love does. You should be trying to bury, not, not grind the axe, the hatchet, but bury the hatchet. What does that mean? That means hide it, put it on the ground so it's forgotten about it. Move on. 
Love keeps no record of wrongs, for we forgive as Christ does. What, what, what does uh, keep records of no wrong uh, mean in, in a forgiving way? I like a married couple, when you're married one, or even husband and wife, I can tell you, I always forgive one another and move on. That's a good, that's a good way to learn how to forgive. It says, between husband and wife. And that's something sometimes parents, some people never get over doing. They never want to let go of the past. We just don't know what he's done, Pastor. You don't know what she's did to me. Forgive him. Jesus says, yet we have to be about forgiving, even in our marriages. Forgiveness does not mean that you have, you have forgotten the offense that was committed against you. It doesn't, it doesn't seem you don't forget, but it, what you know what it does? It teaches, you, it teaches you a lesson. You learn from it. It doesn't say you for you, you. It doesn't mean you you've forgotten about the offense because if you've forgotten about the offense, then then there's a possibility that it could happen again. But you got to remember, you learn from how people treat you. Okay, no, you'll never do that again, right? You'll never harm in that fashion again. True forgiveness means that even though you were offended, the sting of the offense no longer exists. That's what that means. Forgetting it means the sting of the offense no longer exists. You don't think about the pain. You don't think about this ill feeling you have toward a person for a different thing. And even if it does, the memory lingers on. We ought to choose not to hold it against that person. We ought to be trying what to move forward. This is what it means when love keeps no record. If you keep the records constantly, uh, bringing up the past, the offense, you, you, you have not truly forgotten uh, the per forgotten the person and harboring unforgiveness in your heart. When you keep bringing up that past wrong, amen, amen, you're harboring it. Don't have to harbor it because it, it, it holds you hostage. It traps you where you are. Just like love is a choice, you know what else is a choice? Forgiveness. Ooh. Forgiveness is a choice. Choose to forgive. Unforgiveness is a choice. Love is a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. And unforgiveness is a choice you make. Make a choice to forgive. Don't keep record of it. Trying to remember. Amen. The disciples even asked Jesus Christ, how, how, many, how many times are we supposed to forgive? Amen. In fact, first Peter, no, no, at first it was Matthew, Matthew chapter number 18, verse 21 and 22. Um, as we consider the, uh, not keeping a record of wrong, what do we do uh, uh, when there's a serial abuse, when a person continues to, like, to abuse you and take advantage of you? The person continues to sin against you even after you've forgiven them. Uh, Peter asked the question in uh, Matthew 18, 21 through 22. It says, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 77 times, Matthew 18, 21 through 29, through, through 22. Jesus is telling you that you should forgive 490 times and then you don't have to forget, and, and, and then you don't have to forgive anymore. <laughs> He's saying that it, it is no end to the amount of, uh, of forgiveness that you actually give a person. What, what he's basically saying, I always say, and I'll make this example, it's like that you as an individual have to carry around a sheet of paper, a long sheet of paper, for everybody in your life. So if you got 10 people in your family, so you got 10 rolls of toilet paper on each arm, you got five on each wrong, and guess what? Every time somebody wronged you, you got to mark it down. And remember who, where you marked it. Okay, this is my cousin, this is my sister, my brother, this is my coworker. You got to mark it down. You see, but if you say, man, you ain't got time for that, stop it. You don't have time to keep up with that. Forget about it. He said, forget it. Forget about it. Love is a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. And unforgiveness is a choice that you make. I want to encourage you today that you make a conscious decision, a choice to forgive, to reconcile, even with those who mistreat you. Amen.
who talk about you and set traps uh, uh, and say all men of evil against you. Isaiah 43 and 25 says, I even I am who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. God, Jesus says, I don't remember your sins anymore. Once you've asked for forgiveness, I don't remember anymore. That's how we ought to be about people. Don't keep records of wrongs. Forget about it. Ephesians 4 and 32 says, <clears throat> be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, forgave you. As we close tonight, Jesus says we ought to be forgiving just like Christ forgave you. I'm not going to ask you how many times Christ had to forgive you. But that same kind of forgiveness you have to have for your brothers and sisters. Just as Christ forgave you. And that's what I think about sometimes when I think about not forgiving a person. I think about, wow, how many times did God have to forgive me? How many wrongs? How many times did I have to keep making mistakes? And he still says, come on, I love you. Come on, give me a hug. I love you. <laughs> I forgive you. I forgive you. Even while I'm doing wrong, he says, I forgive you. Wow. <sighs> Love keeps no record of being wronged. Stop keeping record. It does no good to the relationship. Move on. Keep trusting God. And remember, as Christ forgave you, forgive others. We're going to stop tonight. Amen. So we covered verse number five or rude. It says it does not demand its own way, is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wrong. We'll start next time we get together. Verse number six it says it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. We'll start there. Verse number six, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He that hath an ear, let him hear with the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Amen. Don't keep your, don't demand your own way. Don't be irritable. And don't keep records of wrongs. Love is unconditional and sacrificial. Share that with your brothers and your sisters, with your family. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight, God, for reminding us, oh Lord, that love is sacrificial and unconditional. Love is sacrificial and unconditional. Help us always remember that, hide that in our heart as you draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, see you Sunday morning as we celebrate another 12, year, 12 years of being at Elm Grove Church. God bless you. Keep the faith. Amen. And remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. And there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.